Hey there viewers, welcome back to part two of the grill refinish project. So what we're looking at here probably looks a little bit different than you saw in part one. Um, I scraped off uh, most of the loosely adhered metal, kind of got down inside of here. Uh, Sam Lester really did a wonderful job on that. So it's really, it's impossible to sand all of these little grooves and louvers and stuff. So I took it in the sand blaster, hit it with the glass bead, um, kind of the, the best that I can do with it. Then I took some 150 and kind of went over the, the front of this to kind of help level things down. So the point where we're at, um, including the 3D printed louver, um, it's pretty much ready for epoxy at this point. I want to get... Um, you know, at least a sealer coat of epoxy on it. I know I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of body filler um, or a couple of different coats of primer as we sand and block and kind of get this transition between, you know, plastic and metal. Because again, it's absolutely impossible to get all of this metal coating off. So I figure my best bet again is to encapsulate and then smooth uh, because the primer is actually sandable. So uh, that would look like probably 150 grit after we get a decent coat of epoxy on this. So um, I know better in something like this than to sit here and soak it wax and grease remover and wipe it with a rag. Uh, so I just really tried to keep it clean. Um, I've blown it off with compressed air. If you do wipe it with a rag, half the time all the little fuzzies from your rag get stuck in it. So um, I'm actually gonna go against the rules on this and not wipe it down, but blow it off really good with an air nozzle. What we're going to do now is mix up some adhesion promoter. We're going to activate it at 5 to 1. We're using a SPI 600 4, not a sponsor. And uh, all I got is a 4 to 1. So we're going to approximate a little bit. About 4.5 to 1 split the difference there. It will be okay. And I'm doing this because of the exposed plastic. Uh, sometimes it does help um, with uh, maybe if the metal didn't quite get sanded exactly the way that it was supposed to. Uh, consider this some semi-expensive insurance. We'll be mixing up about that much, which is way plenty for what it is that we're going to be doing. All right, we're in the booth. You can see my wheel. Uh, we'll probably make another video dedicated just to refinishing wheels. I'll make sure I like my color scheme and all of that stuff first before I go, hey world, look what I made that I don't like. Um, I got my grill sitting in the middle and a Ford emblem. So kind of the happy marriage between GM and Ford, I guess. So we're going to spray a couple different colors here uh, while we're at it. This video is going to focus just on the grill. So I'm going to put the adhesion promoter on, let it sit for 30 minutes. And then uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is a couple coats of slightly reduced epoxy because that's what I have mixed up and uh, saves me from throwing it away.
folks, so where we are at, um, you looked at the grill, it's all been primed. Uh, I block it all out, block it out with 150. Uh, we've already obviously did that step, you've seen it in quite a few of my auto body videos. I just used a soft block and then uh, sand it through most of that epoxy, burn it off, whatever you want to call it, and uh, primed it again after I had everything blocked out really nice with 150. Uh, the second time that I primed it, I blocked it out with 220 on a hand block, finished it with 400 on a DA, and then sprayed a light sealer coat of uh, epoxy primer. Basically, it's just the same epoxy that I used originally with about 30-40% or so uh, reducer mixed into it. So just one medium coat to that, let it sit for two hours, and then I put my base coat on. Let's take a look at that base coat. Okay, so what you have seen uh, probably looks like it's pretty light in uh, where the grill louvers are at. That's because that's gonna be a different color than the um, magnetic. Magnetic, it's a Ford color uh, that I painted this grill. Um, what we're gonna do now, because I need to tape off all of the dark gray, is I'm gonna put probably two coats of BC double zero, just call it double zero, and it's a base clear, it's a base coat that has no pigment whatsoever in it. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna dry quick, it's gonna to stick to my existing base coat, and it's gonna let me put fine line tape all around the cutouts where all of the louvers are, because I'm gonna paint the louvers Admiral Blue, or Opula Blue, whichever color name you want on it. Uh, that color is on the Cadillac CTS and Corvette Grand Sport. So I really like that blue and all that other good stuff that's kind of irrelevant to this movie. So anyway, we're gonna put the uh, two coats of double zero on this. We'll let it dry overnight and then we'll do our blue. When we do our blue, we'll immediately unmask it after spraying and then we'll touch up any leakage around our, uh, uh, around our tape with reducer and that will not disturb the metallic gray because I'll have a base clear over the top of that for insurance, if you will. Okay, so what we have here is apparently a little piece of the <laughs> gun cleaning brush. Uh, sometimes you gotta know when to leave things well enough alone. Uh, I know it's gonna get some rock chips on it. So I have one mistake, unfortunately, on this at this point. Uh, base clear has, or double zero, has all been applied. Um, everything looks nice. I absolutely adore this uh, magnetic gray. It's Ford color. I think it's just called magnetic. All the rock chips are gone. Um, all the metal, you know, whizziness is gone. It looks like a brand new 30 year old grill made out of plastic. Um, so what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna take some 3M. Ooh, let's see, I got two flavors, eighth and quarter, uh, fine line. I've let this sit, shoot, we sprayed it yesterday. Um, I've let it sit for quite a few number of hours, probably 18 or 20 hours. Uh, so that we don't pull any paint off of this thing. Um, the eighth inch is going to be a lot more flexible. Uh, it's basically, if you've ever put pinstripe on a car, it's the same thing. Uh, the quarter inch is a little better for, um, you know, the flats and things like that. So at this point, we're going to tape it off. I already have my blue, which I'm super excited for. Um, I want to paint in here blue, but I'm probably going to put a vinyl uh, decal over that. So that's why I didn't worry too much about the prep work in that area because it's such a pain in the butt. Um, and I want just the louvers to be blue, so let's go ahead and, uh, and do this so we can get some blue paint on it. We'll do it in time lapse.
Okay, so basically at this point, I have applied the uh, fine line in a rough outline around the um, pieces, or rather the vent openings. Now you noticed I didn't go all the way into the corners here, and that was for a couple reasons. Uh, what's gonna be easier for you? For you, uh, do you want to try to get masking tape all over those? Or do you want to wipe it with a rag with some reducer on it? So I'm, I'm electing to take the lazy route and all of that good stuff. So um, this is typically how I'll mask off very complex two-tone uh, paint jobs. The only way you get away with that is because we have double zero clear over the top. So at this point, I've got it pretty close to being roughed in. I am going to take wherever it happened to disappear to. Tape. Uh, Anyway, you're gonna have to trust me on that. Um, we're gonna grab some uh, yellow 3M masking tape. We're gonna cover everything that we want to be silver gets covered. Here's where we are at. So here's what my back looks like. I want to make sure that I don't have any of the grill area covered because obviously we're going to be painting on that. I got a nice handhold in the tape here and a nice handhold in the tape uh, here so that I can flip it while I'm spraying it. Um, you can kind of see how close I've gotten with the fine line tape. So. That is what I want to have blue and all that good stuff. So uh, I'm pretty happy with it. If we have any leaks, uh, the double zero will allow us to wipe with reducer. So if you didn't do that, uh, you cannot do it this way. To my knowledge, you're going to ruin it. Let's go paint it. Mix at the ratio of 2 1 10, optional 10. I like it anyway. We're going to just use our fancy little mix stick here. It's a blue, so it's not the best hiding, so I'm going to mix about that much product as we dump $20 of paint out of the gun. Go one. And lastly, hmm, right in front of me, 10% for the hardener. And we're good to go. This paint will last 24 hours. If you want to be like me and use it past 24 hours, you'll find the metallics clump together and you now have streaks in your paint. So don't do it unless you're going to try to use that color, I suppose, and paint a different color fresh over the top of it. Um, but if you're going to save that paint and then put a clear over it, I don't think you're going to be happy with the results. My experience only.
All right, so I've got the three coats of the blue on our grill. Just the same process. Painting louvers is kind of a pain in the butt. That's how it is. Um, I'm letting the booth run while I clean my spray gun. That should be enough time for that blue to set up so if we accidentally touched it that we wouldn't smudge it or anything like that. All right, so what we're gonna do, this is probably about 10 minutes old, if that, so it's pretty fresh. Uh, it's not so fresh that we're gonna, if we touch it, that we're gonna ruin it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull off as much masking as I can, just being kind of careful with it not to pull the paint. I like to do it when it's kind of fresh out of the booth from the heat. I don't like to leave that tape on there for any prolonged period of time. Let's see, we got some overspray on the bottom, but not in a place where we're going to see any of it. So we lucked out there. So our next step after the masking is pulled is just going to be to touch up our overspray. Obviously, we know there's overspray on the front because uh, we got a little bit lazy with our masking. But it's not a mistake if you intended to do it, is it? I did take a light and just double check inside of my grills to make or inside of the louvers to make sure that um, I had good coverage and we did. Louvers are probably one of the hardest things, in my opinion, to paint. That and ginormous hoods. So we're just gonna kind of pull this such that that didn't go as planned there. I really don't want this tape resting on any of my metallic blue because uh, I don't want it disturbing that fresh metallic. This is why you let it sit for just a little bit of time before you pull it off. But I find if you let it sit too long that uh, you gotta be like overly aggressive with the reducer and your rag. And I'm kind of afraid to burn through the two coats of uh, double zero that I have on this. Oh, there's a little overspray in the middle. Easy, easy to fix. Uh, anyway, if I burn through that, I'll ruin my silver and then uh, Basically, we got to go the whole process over again. So this really isn't unmasking the way that I had quite intended it to. Oh well, it's not sticking, so that's okay. We'll do this in time lapse. Okay, so what we're going to do now um, that all the masking is off, didn't peel any of the paint, is we're just going to go around these little corners with a uh, rag with a minuscule amount of reducer on it. Um, I don't see any issues with our masking. It's kind of what the back of it looks like. It looks kind of terrible, but you know, the only thing that's going to see it's the air conditioning. So anyway, uh, let's take a look at what we need to do. And just take a rag. A good scissor. And I'm going to cut this rag up into little pieces, lots of little pieces. So we'll double it over. I'm going to cut. Doesn't have to be any amount of real precision to it. I estimate we will need approximately one rag. Okay. Don't make the pieces too small. All right, now that we got that out of the way, I'm gonna take some reducer and fill a cap. I'll put this 
someplace where we don't spill it. It's like 50 bucks a gallon. And we'll bring you in. Okay. So I'm going to fold the rag over kind of like such. It's probably a good idea to wear a respirator at this point. I'm going to dip, but not drip. So dip, no drip. If you got to wring it out, great. And all we're going to do, if you can kind of see that little whoopsie do on the corner there, is we're just going to kind of well, make him go away. Just like that. I'll dip the other end, squeeze. Okay, and that is pretty much it. Move on to the next one. Looks like we got this corner here. I'm gonna try my last clean corner. If you don't wipe with a clean corner, um, you tend to get a bunch of blue streaks. So I throw away the pieces of rag fairly often just to keep everything clean. So I'm not wiping it 200 different times and Remember, you've only got a little bit of base clear over this stuff, so you don't want to be all hog wild with how hard you're going to rub this stuff. I always chase it one last time with a brand new piece of rag. Because you will notice the blue over the silver, which, or rather it's a gray, not a silver, whatever. Um, and it'll look weird, okay? It'll look like a kindergartner did this. Not what we want. We always want to color in the lines.
Okay, I'm just kind of inspecting the grill here, seeing if we missed any glaring things, any blue. Well, it always shows up good after the clear, so take a minute at this point in time, make sure we're good. Uh, everything looks pretty nice on it. You can kind of see how we got the lines all crisp and things like that. Um, there is an emblem insert that goes you know, right there and things like that. So I'm not gonna worry too terrible much about it. Uh, our next step on this guy is to put the clear coat on it. So I'm gonna wait about a half hour, uh, let all that reducer dry and things like that. And I'll get some of our clear coat mixed up and ready to go. See you in the booth. There you have it viewers that is and this is still extremely wet and sticky 
Let's see a shine on that. That is a uh, two-tone grill for your uh, 1990 Oldsmobile 98 uh, with a 3D printed part. So it just goes to show that uh, with enough, enough time, perseverance, uh, money maybe, um, that these type of grills, this ABS plastic with the chrome over it, are fixable. Um, is it feasible in a body shop type of environment? Probably not, unless the person is uh, willing to spend the money. So uh, hopefully you learned something from this video. If you did, uh, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, give us a thumbs down. Uh, if you like the way that we did this, leave us a comment. If you have a different way that you would do something like this, leave us a comment. And as always, thanks for watching.